in this video I'm going to be talking about Cohen's Kappa which is a measurement for inter-rater agreement and this is a tutorial for SPSS. So in research designs where you have two or more raters which are commonly called judges or observers who are responsible for measuring, measuring a variable on a categorical scale it is important to determine whether such raters agree or disagree with each other. Cohen's kappa, also known as K, is such a measure of inter-rater agreement for categorical scales when there are two raters. K is the lowercase Greek letter kappa. So when is Cohen's kappa applicable? There are many occasions when you need to determine the agreement between two raters. For example, you, want to, you may want to examine whether a graduate psychology student can make diagnoses similar to that of a qualified psychologist. Both the student and the qualified professional are asked to diagnose volunteers as having symptoms of major depressive disorder, MDD, and where displays symptoms and does not display symptoms are two categories of a nominal variable, shows symptoms of MDD. The level of agreement between the two raters for each volunteer is analyzed using Cohen's kappa. Since the results showed a very good strength of agreement between the two raters, hypothetically, the head of the psychology department feels somewhat confident that psychology students are diagnosing patients in a similar manner to that of professionals. However, it is worth noting that even if two raters strongly agree, this does not necessarily mean that their decision is correct. They could both be making the same incorrect decisions such as misdiagnosing the, misdiagnosing the patients. This is, some t this is something that you have to take into account when reporting your findings, but it cannot be measured using Cohen's Kappa when comparing the student and the qualified professional. So I'm just going to go through some assumptions that have to be met with your data or your some assumptions that your data has to meet in order to correctly perform the Cohen's Kappa analysis. The first assumption is that the response example, the judgment that is made by your two raters is measured on a nominal scale, i.e. either an ordinal or nominal variable, and the categories need to be mutually exclusive, and this means that no categories overlap. For example, a rater could only consider a patient to display symptoms of major depressive disorder, and the patient cannot sh both show symptoms and not show symptoms, so those categories mutually exclude one another. The second assumption is that the response data are paired observations of the same phenomenon, meaning that both raters assess the same observations. Continuing with the student versus psychologist example, a single paired observation reflects the assessment of student for patient 1 compared to the assessment of psychologist for patient 1, i.e. they are comparing the same patient. With 15 patients in the study, this means that there are 15 paired observations. The third assumption is that each response variable must have the same number of categories and the cross tabulation must be symmetric, i.e. square. Example, a 2x2 two two cross tabulation and a 3x3 three three cross tabulation and 4 times 4 etc. And in a 2x2 two two, it means that the responses of both raters are measured on a dichotomous, i.e. yes or no scale, that is a nominal scale with two categories. The fourth assumption is that the two raters must be independent from one another. One rater's judgment does not affect the other rater's judgment. An instance where this may occur is if the two raters, in our hypothetical example, discuss the assessment of the patient's depressive symptoms before recording their response, i.e. no symptoms or display symptoms, or perhaps are simply in the same room when they make the assessment and this could influence the assessment choice that they eventually make. It is important that such potential for bias is removed from the study design as much as possible before the data is collected. The fifth and last assumption is that the two raters are fixed, meaning that they are specifically selected to take part in the study. For example, in the data being used, the head of the psychology department wanted to know if these two specific student and specific psychologist agreed in their assessment because the student was, let's say, close to graduating and the psychologist had many years of experience. 
However, when two raters are selected at random from a population of raters, rather than being fixed, such as being specifically selected, Cohen's kappa is no longer appropriate, and in such cases you can use Fleece's kappa instead. However, it's not possible to perform Fleece's kappa in SPSS unless you know the syntax for it. So our hypothetical data set is as follows. We have 15 patients and the student rates each patient as 1 or 0. 1 meaning displays symptoms of MDD and 0 meaning does not display symptoms of MDD. And then the same goes for the psychologist rating the exact same participant or volunteer as the student was rating and then giving their response. So what I want to do, I want to do a cup analysis to see the level of agreement between these two raters to see whether they agree or disagree or and whether that level of agreement is significant. And I'll be using the Kappa analysis in SPSS to do that. So let's move on to SPSS. So in SPSS we have the exact same data set that we were looking at earlier. And I've already added the values. So one is already coded as symptoms of MDD and zero is already coded as no symptoms of MDD for both the students and the qualified psychologist. To perform the CUP analysis, we simply go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs, and here we want to put our two raters in either the row or column cross tabs. I like to put the I don't know how to say the more legitimate value or the more yeah let's just call it the more legitimate value in the column and then the comparison in the row and then next we go to statistics and you simply click on kappa this will calculate the kappa statistic in conjunction with the cross tabulation additionally you can also go to cells and you can have the counts of the observed and the expected responses. And then you click OK. So once we have our output from SPSS, we can attempt to interpret the results. So the case processing summary, it just tells us that there are 15 paired responses and nothing, no data is missing from either paired responses. This cross tabulation tells us the where there was agreement and disagreement in the responses. For instance, there's above expected agreement for no symptom classification. They agreed on five cases and the expected ca count was around 2.3. And there's also above expected agreement for symptom diagnosis. As you can see here, they agreed on eight where there were symptoms of MDD, but has an expected of 5.3. However, there were also two cases where the qualified psychologist said there were, <coughs> were no symptoms, but the student said there were, but it's still a less than expected level of disagreement. So that's pretty good. And this kind of reflects, or this does reflect in the, the symmetric measures where we can see our TAUS, our Kappa score, which is 0.727, which is quite a moderate level of inter-rater agreement. We have a standard error of 0.173, an approximate TAU of 2.928, and this Kappa is significantly different from zero agreement. And that is pretty much how you do a Cohen's Kappa, and that's the level of interpretation you need to do. However, when you want to write up your analysis, you can do it as follows. But before that, before that, if you to interpret the the Kappa score you got, you can use these general types of interpretations 
where less than zero is a poor agreement and you can get negative Kappa scores, although it's rather rare. Zero to point zero point two is a slight agreement. Zero point two one to zero point four is fair agreement. And zero point four one to zero point six is moderate agreement. Zero point six one to zero point eight zero is a substantial agreement, which is the score that we received on our hypothetical Kappa test. And zero point eight one to one is an almost perfect agreement, which is what you would want to see really. So if you want to write up your results of your Kappa score, you can do it similarly to this. And it goes Cohen's K or Cohen's Kappa was run to determine if there was agreement between a student psychologist and a professional psychologist in diagnosing symptoms of major depressive disorder. There was a moderate, actually I should change that to substantial. There was a substantial agreement between the two diagnoses with kappa equals 0 0.727 with a p-value of less than 0 0.003, which is statistically significant. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped if you came here with a specific problem. And if it didn't, leave a comment and I'll try to respond to that as well. Thanks.